Welcome to part three and the final chapter of this semester uh, for chapter nine in experimental design. We'll look over factorial experiments. This is also known as two factors with replication. So what is replication? The repetition of all the treatment combinations that can be compared in an experiment. So treatments again, those are all combinations of factors at different levels. Here's an example of a factorial design. During the quarantine, many people ordered family-centered games and projects online. The three product categories were Legos, games, and puzzles. The three retailers most often used were Target, Walmart, and Amazon. Each week for four weeks, a sample was taken to see how many thousands of items were ordered. The data is shown in the table. Notice how you have one, two, three, four repetitions per category. So that means there were four replications in this design. The factorial experiments will test for interaction. We create an interaction variable by crossing two factors such as product and retailer. There's a command and jump that will cross these variables. The two factors work in combination at different levels to yield different values for the response if there's truly interaction. The elements of this factorial design are the experiment itself is recording the average number of orders per week based on product and retailer, replicated over four weeks. The factors are the products and retailers. The levels are the labels, Legos, games, puzzles, Target, Walmart, and Amazon. The treatments would be defined as all combinations of products and retailers at different levels. The response variable is the average orders per week. Here's our output. So first we want to test for interaction. You'll go under the effects test beneath the analysis of variance. You see the factors product, retailer, and the cross of product and retailer. That's your interaction term. So you go to the F statistic, 34.05. It has a p-value less than 0 0.0001. Therefore, we'll reject HO and decide there is interaction. When we set up the hypothesis, just think of HO and NO. HO, there is no interaction. HA, there is interaction. So our p-value was low, we rejected HO. The product and the retailer do work in combination to yield different order outcomes. Finally, if there is interaction, you go straight to the interaction plot and you read each category across the chart. So when I look for the highest number of orders in the games category, I see the blue line, which goes with Walmart. Then when I look at Legos category, its highest point is the green line, which represents Target. And then Puzzle's highest point occurs with Amazon sales. So the game sold the best at Walmart, Legos sold more at Target, and the puzzles sold the most at Amazon. That's all we're going to do with our factorial designs. 
You can apply analysis of variance to observational data if the box plots show roughly equal spreads and symmetric outlier-free distributions. So in other words, they're normally distributed. We want to do so with caution. A lot of our business studies are observational, but they're prone to a variety of problems. A lot of times they're unbalanced. Their sample sizes in the groups are unequal. Randomization is usually absent. There's no control over lurking variables or confounding. And we're unable to draw causal conclusions even when the F statistic is significant. These are the things that can go wrong with experimental designs. Don't give up just because you can't run an experiment. Be aware of confounding and lurking variables. Bad things can happen to well-designed experiments. Record as much information as possible regarding the circumstances of an experiment. Don't spend your entire budget on a first run. Try a small pilot experiment first. And watch out for those outliers. Some of the pitfalls are heteroscedasticity, changing variances, Avoid drawing causality conclusions if it's observational data. Be wary of generalizing situations other than the one at hand. Watch for multiple comparisons and use an appropriate multiple comparison method such as Tukey. And be sure to fit an interaction term when it exists. If the interaction term is not significant, fit a simpler block design to test the main effects instead. In summary, you want to recognize observational studies and randomize comparative experiments. Only well-designed experiments can allow us to reach causal conclusions. Observe the principles of experimental design. Use the p-values under the post hoc analysis or the Tukey method for identifying which treatments are different. Use pairwise comparison scatter plots if interaction is found. 